I've said this before on the show how I'm not able to uh, yell properly. I'm not, or I'm not able to convey. A no, message. you're not able to communicate. Yeah, you're not able to communicate effectively. Um, at distance, with a, a with high a, a high tone of voice, with yeah. a strong tone of voice. At distance, yeah. For whatever reason, um, yeah, I'm great at yelling. I uh, just apparently not good at speaking while yelling. And I can hardly say words, so it looks like we're both at a disadvantage. So it looks like we're ready to get into the show. Let's kick it. <laughs> Continuing tonight on two season of pop 96.7 on your two season a pot, 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 well, you wake up in a school and you don't want to leave. Bam, bam, bam. Mom says, Harry, that's my favorite cleave. Bam, bam, bam. That's the song. You got to fight for your right. <laughs> it's two C's. What's up, everyone? It's your host, Cam LeClaire, and his favorite paleo, his other camera friend. It's Cam Osborne. You're tuning in for number 60, baby. Number 60, two season upon Cam. Thanks to, uh, what, what, what was, uh, could you name to me a single Beastie Boy? I, I sure as hell couldn't. Uh, Dave Navarro. Dave Navarro. <laughs> oh, we go, we'll talk about Ink Master later, folks. Thanks for tuning in. It's two season pod, episode uh, 60. Of course, this is a podcast hosted by myself. Uh, yeah, my name's Cameron Osborne. We got Cam LeClaire, and um, this is just another great week, I think, uh, for the two of us because, Cam, uh, we got through the move. We did it. We uh, made it through. We're alive. So that's, um, we're, I don't know, I guess we're somewhat. We're downstairs. I can all, I can already yeah. see that um, there's a bookshelf, not where the last place I saw the bookshelf, uh, which is fantastic, Cam. Um, how did everything go? Did we forget anything? Was something put drastically out of place? Uh, I mean, the way you guys put together the kitchen was an atrocity. Oh, that was going to be my big question. How spe specifically, how did setting up the kitchen go? We literally had someone come in the um, Monday and redid the whole thing for you. Like uh, Audrey came in on the Monday and we were just like, go to the kitchen and do something that makes more sense. Because what these guys did is um, how, how to say uh, stupid. Now, uh, now this is very difficult. If, if anyone's ever helped somebody move in, of course, you know, it's uh, not only the the physical strain of kind of making sure everything gets on the truck and get where it gets where it needs to be, but then also the mental strain of making sure the place things go to the right places. And I think out yeah. of all the responsibilities, uh, Cam, you, you have to agree that setting up the kitchen is the biggest of the responsibilities. Um, because I mean, that's where you, that's where you're going to spend the majority of your time. You know, that's where you're going to want things in specific places. We had to remind, a t uh, the, the taller ones to not be putting the wine glasses at the very, very back. Uh, you know, because there's some people who are under six feet tall who may have to reach them one day. That's the thing. Shannon and I are both tall, so it wasn't a huge problem. Almost six feet, I guess. Yeah. That's tall, Almost right? Almost six feet. Yeah. It's, um, say that. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, so we don't have a problem reaching anything in the house, but when people come over, they're like, what, what are we doing here? Like, why would you, you know, why would you put something so high in the air? Oh, well, yeah, certainly putting together the kitchen was a very difficult task. Uh, I think some listeners would probably agree with me that it's, uh, you know, you got to put things to, you know, sort of where you, and then you had too much stuff for places. And then we're thinking to ourselves, let's just get it all in there. Uh, we don't know where you want to put the six different blenders. Like, we filled every uh, possible uh, mount, every single possible thing we did cover, but, you know... It gets tough sometimes. You have a lot of bowls and a lot more bakeware than uh, we thought. Than needed. <laughs> than needed, I would say. There's so many things that I just look at and I'm like, 
Why? So going through the move, this is one thing I, you know, I've moved a lot also. I like, there's always the purge of stuff before you leave the house. And then there's like a repurge. The purge after, yeah. Because you realize you're like, we put this in a box to bring over. And now it's here and I don't know why it's here. So tell me, is there anything, um, you know, from the bedroom, the bathroom, the kitchen area, anything that you're not sort of looking at and be like, we can, uh, you know, just kind of toss this. Flip it, maybe. Yeah. Yeah, but I've done quite a bit of that already. I got rid of a printer, Mm -hmm. like a $100 printer plus ink, because I realized I live within walking distance of a Staples. I print things maybe four times a year. (laughs) And why do I need this big, bulky object that's just sitting like either in a closet or just like on a shelf? But you always bring it to the next place. You never have the foresight to just get rid of it before. But then you well, see you look at something that's a hundred dollars. You're like, of course, that's something you don't throw out, <laughs> right? Exactly. Exactly. I made a move. I think I made two. two I a move with a printer, full knowing that I wanted to sell it. But it was like, let's just get it there, and then we'll deal with it. Uh, you know, someone's gonna have to. Yeah, carry it, it. it was a lot of that. It was it just like un- unpack the closet. Don't think about it. Just unpack. Yeah, that should be that should be the other title of my book. Um, don't think about it. Just complete the task. Deal with the consequences later. The Cam Claire story. You know, Claire's that's, story. that's yeah. good. Just, de- uh, just if, if, if Nike just, didn't swoop in there with their tagline, uh, Cam, I think, don't you know, think just do, just do yeah. it. Like that's your, uh, that's you, that's you in a nutshell. Cam, it's glad. I'm, I'm so glad to hear that the move went well. It was a great time, uh, moving you over there and it already, it already looks brighter. I gotta say, the future looks bright for where you are, Cam LeClaire. But let's get into the show, <laughs> shall we? Because we uh, we had our little bit of a mini. We did we had a mini last week, a little mini sewed. Mm-hmm. And uh, you know we didn't actually necessarily get to cover some of the uh, some of the callbacks from the week prior. Would have been a week fifty episode fifty eight, I believe. So uh, yeah, a little little bit little off with our timing, but that's just you know sometimes when you move houses, there's things that come up and well, Cam, and, uh, Cam, I mean, deal with it. you're saying this like like it's a problem, but it's Monday. The show is being... It's the, Monday. This is it, Monday. Everything's happening. Everything's happening like this we promised. This is how you to. know the week started because Juicy and Pod just popping yeah. up on your um on your radio feed. And of course, because it's Monday. Uh, so we're going to get into some notes uh, from last week. How does that sound? Notes. We got some notes. We got some notes. 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 We got some notes. Sounds like a plan, my man. Uh, we were talking about um, uh, going to the racetrack. Betting on the ponies, as it were. Betting on the ponies. And the topic of um, Canadian racehorse legend Cam Fella came mm-hmm. up. You know, uh, names in which because he, that's how we were. That's how we were both named after the horse Cam Fella. We we're <laughs> Cam Fella. That's right. Cam Fella. And we're, that's why I say I don't know how to speak. No, we were both named after a horse. Fun fact. Um, but one thing that you should know. Is that who was Cam Fellow? Well, he was actually one of the richest standard bred horses of all time. He was the uh, foal, so he was the little baby of most happy fella and Nan Cam. Comes back to be Cam yeah. Fella, uh, apparently so. Uh, so Cam Fella had a career record of 61, 9, and 5 and earned over $2 million in only three years of competition. But see? Beautiful. That's uh, $1982. <clears throat> That's a little bit different than, you know, when you're looking at inflation and all those sorts of things. It, um, However, it wasn't until he started studying when he actually became a household name in the race, a horse racing industry. Studying, which is just a fantastic way to mention uh, that this is the point that just he starts putting your seed in somebody. Putting his seed. So he was a stud from 1984 until 1998. That's right. He raced for three years and studded for 14. How that happens, we don't know. Over that period of time, he had 1,002 foals. Now, let's... Okay, I'll let you finish this up, and then I'll bring it back to how that makes sense, actually. he Over that period of time, he had 1,002 foals who earned a total of $106 million in... Uh, that 14-year span of racing competitions. He actually has five foals who um, are currently in the uh, like horse racing Hall of Fame, <laughs> whatever I, whatever the equivalent of that is. Yeah, I don't know. I, I don't know where the horse racing Hall of Fame is. Yeah. Uh, Missouri, maybe? That Kentucky, Kentucky right. seems like a good spot yeah. for it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Well, so you're going to say you were you were in the midst oh, of interjecting. Oh, my point. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, it, yeah. So I thought you were continuing on with this. No, we talk did. about how if you do three years of racing, then 14 years of studying. That seems like a peculiar ratio. Ben Johnson. How long was he racing for in his prime of his career versus ladies asking for his seed? Was that a thing? I didn't I didn't hear about this rumor. What do you mean? Like, of course, every okay, Usain Bolt. You don't think he's uh he's uh ladies are hitting up his DM, flowing his DMs, and he only raced for what, eight years? Yeah, but there's no or, no, but Full uh, time. what I'm what I'm Rest saying of you, his like, life is, is gonna be studying. Is Andre DeGrasse actually like Ben Johnson's studying results? Like as as this proven? Oh, I hear what you mean. Yeah, because I I'm sure someone, mean. you know, I mean, I get calls all the time. Cameron, like don't want the no intercourse. Just how I just want, want your seed. just need the seed. Don't want the yeah, intercourse. Get that a lot. I get that all the time. Two season a pot of Yeah, team. you ever get sales calls from the sperm bank? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're trying to sell me sperm. Uh, two scenes pot at gmail.com. <laughs> Let us know whose seed do you want more of, Cam LeClaire or Cameron Osborne? This is non sexual. This is purely uh, in a genetic sur- survival material. of the fittest. Yeah, genetic material. These types of things. Moving on to our next note, Cam. We were talking about, um, I think it was 14 time World Series champion Yogi Berra. That sounds right. Of course, when you when you win when when you win uh, when you're winning World Series both before and after World War II, that's when you know you're a real uh, kind of st- hey, a stud in his own right. But we were saying Yogi Berra. It is an odd nickname, right, for someone whose real name real name is Lawrence Peter Berra. So how do you get the name Yogi? It was when he was playing minor league baseball, where a teammate of his named Jack McGuire was, uh, you know, watching a local news program about the rising craze of yoga uh, from India. He was watching a television report about it, and he said that uh, Barra reminded him of a yogi because he would always sit in the dugout with his legs crossed like he was doing yoga. So nothing Sometimes to do it's with that, Yogi Bear. Nothing to do with Yogi Bear, like uh, like we thought. Um, I, I thought it was that one time he was caught with his hand in a woman's picnic basket. Apparently that was not the case. It was just, um, it just proves how easy a nickname can just kind of be. Just watch, you know, if you're sitting like that, you're just going with your legs crossed. Who knows? You know, when you say it that way, it definitely sounds like he assaulted the woman. <laughs> Well, that's why Yogi Bear. That's why Yogi Bear is. Uh, it's not. He doesn't work for the park services. No, I think he's like. This is like court mandated community service that he has to do. Uh, our final note for the week. We were talking about. I think he made it to the end of our most recent March Madness bracket. The goat, goat, the Michael Phelps. I believe he made it to the end. Cam of your bracket there. Of course, the twenty eight. Uh, what 28 olymp uh, 28 medals and 20 golds or something wild like that uh, but we were talking about his diet and what somebody of that size has to do to maintain exactly what he has um so uh just a little report that came up um from an interview right around the 2008 beijing olympics which uh was the olympic games in which he won eight gold medals so we could say his prime um, throughout, I, fair to say, uh, fair to say, right? Uh, so throughout um, Michael Phelps's day, he would he was eating approximately twelve thousand calories, and here's an average uh, breakfast, lunch, and dinner of what he ate. Uh, so first for breakfast, most important meal of the day, wouldn't you say, Cam? <laughs> Jesus Christ, wouldn't you say? <laughs> That's my yes. That's my yes. Uh, so for breakfast, Michael Phelps would eat three fried egg sandwiches with cheese, lettuce, tomato, onion, and mayo on white bread. You have two cups of coffee. You'd have a five egg omelet, one bowl of oatmeal, three slices of sugar coated French toast, and three chocolate chip pancakes. It seems like a lot of carbs. Seems like well, if you think that's a lot of carbs, Cam, for lunch, <laughs> lunch, uh, you know, also a very important meal of the day. Sometimes it gets overlooked, but you know, if you're a if you're one of the premier athletes on the planet, you got to make sure you incorporate lunch. Uh, where you would eat a half kilogram of pasta, two rather large ham and cheese sandwiches with mayo on white bread, uh, 
I like how they define that. As, it was like, it, in the what report, size? Like rather large. In the report, he it was said he was like these are pretty big. Uh, these uh, th- there were no photos or anything like that, but uh, stacked. Next next time I'm in the Tim's lineup, they're like, "What size would you like your coffee?" You're like uh, rather large. <laughs> like, like rather large or medium? Sandwich. You're like rather large. Like a rather so they're large. Like sandwich. we don't really have a rather large. You got to pick one. Uh, the sandwiches, and then um, four protein slash mass gainer mass gainer shakes, equivalent to about a thousand calories just in the shakes. Beautiful. Uh, but of course, you know, I, I can see the shakes. You can you can get a thousand calories into a shake. Exactly. I had well, a uh, yeah, Tim have, Hortons yeah. ice cap variation today that had five hundred calories in it, and I felt like a piece of shit. So then I worked on. <laughs> So then I worked on the heavy bag for like 20, 30 minutes until and said, it felt until I said, yeah, then I feel better. And then I had a beer on the balcony and I was like, well, it looks like we're back to baseline. <laughs> no, well, I guess you brought yourself back to zero, I guess. Yeah, but that's I not done. Know. That's not done. Of course, uh, breakfast and lunch. Some people would have bowed out after this much food, um, but not Michael Phelps, because for dinner, he's uh, eating another kilogram of pasta. Uh, penne was his uh, was his favorite uh, apparently. It's pretty good. That's one of the better pastas I would one say. Better pastas. Spaghetti and meatballs very good, but uh, penne is up there. He would eat a large pepperoni and cheese pizza, and Ooh. four more of the protein mass gainer shakes, uh, and then repeat for the next day. Really goes hard on breakfast. Everything yeah. else comes after, um, but for uh, you know throughout this time, he was also swimming for five hours a day, uh, and tra- a uh, training. Time um, he would he would be swimming about fifty miles a week, total. Hmm. I don't think I drive that much these days. <laughs> I don't even I don't even walk fifty <laughs> miles a week. Uh, this this these days, but yeah, uh, there you go. Yeah, just <clears throat> that's our final that's our final note, and just Jesus Christ, Michael Phelps. So speaking of pizza, <clears throat> I got a fun little, uh, me and Shannon were passing by a uh, store today that was called like, you know, something pizza. It was like Tito's Pizza and Wraps or some bullshit. And you know when you find like a small pizza place and you're like, maybe that's the one that's the best in town. I don't know. Because <laughs> you're like, there's a thousand, right? There's your shitty pizzas. Mm-hmm. There's your Domino's, blah, blah, blah. You know, go down the list. But then you find like that local joint and you're like, maybe that's really good, but I've never tried it. So we Google it as like 4.4, which I'm like, that's really high for a pizza joint. Um, and everyone's like, you have to try the shawarma pizza. So it's like shawarma meat and garlic sauce, blah, 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 on a pizza. So we're like, fuck yeah, we got to try this. But we're like, I don't, I don't like eating out like shit food like that, um, you know, because shit for you. And if you haven't done anything to earn it, then you don't really, what are you doing? So we made a challenge for the week. We said, okay, we'll order this on Saturday night if we both work out four times this week, meditate three days this week, and train Darla every day on recall training. Is this so a I think total is too. this total recall training or uh no, just, it's just when you when you call training. her name, then she comes back to you. Oh, okay. Be- okay. So my mind was going somewhere else. So something fun that we'll do, and I think if we both hit it, then uh, you know I, I like to set little, uh, little 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 rewards for yourself. So is right? this is this for this coming Saturday or Saturday? That just this is for this coming Saturday. Yeah, Baby. This, for this coming Saturday. Yeah. So we better be. Uh, you know, I think we, I I'm certain I can hit it, but I'd like just having that you know that little bit of motivation in the week to be like, let me get that pizza on Saturday. It's something so small, but it's like you know I don't know little little treats at the end of the week. We're doing good shit. Little treats at the end of the week. Don't no one hops on the scale on Saturday and Sunday morning. No, it's illegal. Who cares? Who cares? The scale should be off limits on Saturday. We get jacked throughout the week, and then you, uh, yeah, you chow down. That anyway, sounds great. That so sounds great. I hope it works out well. It is funny <clears throat> you said that though, because Tito's Pizza in Newmarket was like Newmarket's best joint in town. I don't think it was called Tito's. It was called something weird, and it was. Pizza and wraps. Yeah, that's a weird combo. So they do shawar- they do shawarma and pizza. Yeah, that's a and weird combo. And all the comments were, hey, I've had shawarma pizza before. It's dynamite. <laughs> Would recommend. All right, let's keep plowing ahead because we have a pretty big new segment for the folks at home. It's the old slobs. It's the, slob- the old slobs. It's the slobs. You'll know it. 
you'll know it. We we picked the show. Old slops will remember on we last looked at, week's we looked, mini. Uh, the potential of sort of bringing people along with us, almost on like a like a watch along party, but over the course of many weeks. You 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 sent us emails. You told us watch Friends, not a chance, not a chance, right? Watch Seinfeld, already seen it too many times, right? Watch The Office, go fuck yourself, right? Watch Mash, maybe next. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> and then Goldstruck. In the form of Mr. David Hasselhoff himself. That's right, everyone. It's this week's episode of A Night in Five Minutes. Night Rider was our show of choice. Yeah, after after much deliberation, of course, new uh, words from the fans at home. Thanks, youth slobs. Uh, yeah, we kind of came. We thought it'd be fun to crank out the first season of a show that... As I watched, I realized I I I I'd known more about through popular culture, which is a lot of fun. Something that neither one of us have ever watched before. But yes, we got to thank you for the enormous outpour of support. We're looking, you know, lots of uh, lots of recommendations. Uh, many of them were terrible. Uh, we're not going to call out by names, but yeah, um, maybe something a little bit better next time, f- folks, so- ladies and gentlemen. Uh, Zims and Zers out there. So we're hopping in our DeLorean. So we're bringing ourselves back to a Friday night in 1982. Because we are about to catch the two-hour series premiere of the uh, Universal show. I think is that I think that's what I said. The Universal Classic Night Rider. So here's what we're gonna do. We don't want to spend a. We don't want the the episode to just kind of drag on to us recalling and quickly recapping some of the highlights and lowlights of uh, of the series itself. So what we said, we're getting ourselves a five-minute limit. Hard, hard limit. I've got, if we don't get I've, through it all. We've got the counter right here. It's ready to go. And we, you stop we? when the timer stops. I got, I got it right here, baby. Okay, you got it set. All right. Um, okay, so do we want to do five minute recap or like three minute recap, two minute um, discussion? I think we just do five minute recap. We include whatever we can in there. Be strict with time. I'm going to start a timer at the same time as you so that we can both be, um, you know, as they say in Germany, on time. I think they say that everywhere else, Cam. So I'm going to let you start this one off because, Cam, I can tell how excited you are. Are you ready for it, listeners? Five, four. Oh, I'm, I'm not. Well, Cam, I have the timer. You don't also need I, the timer. I want the timer. I want well, the timer. Well, but now it's taking up the time. We could have been five. 30 seconds into the five minutes. And five. Jesus four, Christ. Three, two, one. Okay, we're going to start off with the uh, opening scene. They are at a gambling establishment where you uh, place money, and there's some kind of shady business going on here. But thank God, uh, I don't think it's Michael Knight, but it's some officer who's doing security, is keeping an eye on things, and we don't need to get into the details of this. There's bad guys there. There's bad guys there. <laughs> of course. We're already 30 seconds in. We need to keep going ahead. There's bad guys there. They they leave the scene, um, and then Michael <laughs> chases after them, and because he's chasing after them, he's a good guy, but he gets shot, and and, and he's they think he's dead. Next thing you know, <laughs> next thing you know, <coughs> he comes out oh, of Jesus a Christ. hospital and they've done full reconstruction facial surgery on him and changed his fingerprints because this man is legally dead. But this new man, Michael Knight, is here to save the day and get back at those crooks. I don't even, I'm going to take this. I, I don't even, Keep going. I, I, we got, I, we got I, I four minutes know, here. I don't even know where to hop. In right now, that's right. Um, uh, sir, uh, uh, surgically reinvented Michael Knight, formerly Michael Long, who we do see before, uh, is now you know is now a member of Knight Industries, where they have fitted him with, uh, you know, not only life again, but the ability to work for them. So they set them up in what is a Pontiac Trans Am, real nice looking Pontiac Trans Am, about a hundred thousand dollars in terms of production costs, which is like two hundred fifty thousand dollars these days. G. 
Jesus Christ. But this is no normal car. No, it kind of looks like, I believe uh, the exact quote that Michael Knight says is, this looks like Darth Vader's bathroom. My exact old car. Oh, okay. He says, it looks like Darth Vader's bathroom. You're picturing all the bleeps and bloops, but this is no normal car, car like we said, because guess what? It talks back to you. Kit! Now, I will point this out. Um, I'll try and take this really quick. Most of the features that this car actually has are now available in a standard Tesla. Yeah, picture like a current Tesla with what you the bat like the 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 comical hijinks of what the Batmobile also was. The, you know, the, the big classic diff- seat ejection, the classic yeah. oil slick, all these Yeah, uh, the classic smoke screen behind it can do basically anything with a touch of a button. Um, but also indestructible because they've gotten down to the molecular level, as they say, and made it indestructible. You can't drill through it. You can't shoot a gun through it. Um, we got to keep plowing ahead, Cam. We're halfway through this, and we have just introduced the car. But a lot of this episode is just based around um, showing what the car's capabilities are. They, um, they, he meets a lady. The lady is uh, <laughs> infatuated with him, but she's not over her last relationship yet. So um, there's a kid involved, and she's the kid, and he's a dickhead, so watch out for him. His name's um, Buddy, which I think is great, you know, because like, I think of like your stepdad calling his stepson, like, hey, buddy. Also, the kid from the never-ending story, the kid who's reading the book all the time in the attic. I don't know, but yeah, like you said, Cam, classic. We need an easy bad guy that we can just bang, bang out. We're going after Comtron. That's right, we're going Comtron. after Comtron. And Comtron, Tracy? Comtron the, the organization, the woman, the entity who was involved in the intro. Intro's uh, big murder. It was definitely a bad big guy. Big murder plot. When we were coming into Las Vegas, by the way, Cam, I didn't know how you realized that that was Las Vegas. But yeah, we have to take out Comtron, and what better way to start that off than by entering a uh, a smash derby? Yes. Well, no, it's a race slash smash derby to just because you have to do the race. To yeah, it's very bizarre. But we're not going to get into details here because we have a minute. Because it's not to about go that. Here. We got to we got to see the, how the car can do. It's bashing over he all wins. these other cars. It's going he wins. over. He can he, he can destroy anything with his car. He'll never get hit. It can go on two wheels. Now this is my he, favorite part. Car. Now this we where, got one minute. Now here. this is where my favorite part starts to come in because of course, as we know, Michael Knight just sort of parks the car outside of the bad guy's base and then it and gets leaves towed. his door open. It gets towed, oh, which part, I yeah. think to be very funny. This like futuristic car is getting towed. It can't lock itself out. It gets towed over the bad guys. They can't get into it. What the heck? Michael Knight wants his goddamn car back. There will be blood after a bloody shootout where Michael Knight gets shot in the chest by the way oh you forgot that the car breaks him out of jail which appears to be a pretty fatal looking wound he somehow manages the gusto gets himself up to not only take out the bad guys but inadvertently who are chasing him with a helicopter inadvertently murder the woman because she tried to shoot the glass and it bounced right off i did love how it bounced like and he right was off. like, "Don't shoot!" And then, bah. so what's Michael? Like, so what's oh, Michael? Knight, so, a bitch. so what's Michael Knight going to do? He's, uh, you know, we're, we're, um, he, he he's taken on the role of being the Night Rider. And beautiful! Wow! Beautiful! Wow! God, I can't believe we compressed forty-five minutes. Oh, actually, into an hour and five. a half. I, oh, yeah, good point. Um, Big- holy smokes! That was deep. Um, well, it looks like we can't talk about this anymore because that would be against the rules of the game. It would be against the rules of the game. Cam, I, I just need to find out when you <laughs> want me to jump in, of course, next week's episode. I, we'll we just be... we just got to bounce off each other, and it's it's a, it's a mad scramble to just, just you vomit out 40, uh, an hour and a half. We'll Each get, episode, folks. Uh, yeah. we, we'll get Sh- there, too. This was the double episode. We should have given ourselves maybe t- seven minutes. Can we, should we give us an extra two just to, to give a quick discussion no. on it because it was double? Okay, good point. Fair enough. <laughs> All right. Come back um, next now week. Now, folks at home, for next folks at home, two. if you do want to watch the show yourselves, it is the first season available on YouTube for twenty dollars. Um, if you don't want to do it that way, um, just you know, find your back alley ways to do it. It's pretty easy. Use DuckDuckGo and just search, uh, stream it. I don't know. You're a fucking. You're probably in your twenties or thirties, and you you probably know how to do it. So. Uh, take care of that. Yeah, chances are if you're listening, if you have found the ability to listen to this yeah. radio show. If you figured this out, you know how to stream You probably t- know how to do something else, right? I would recommend the YouTube stream, though, just because it is useful to... Um, it is very useful to just have it, like, saved at the right point and then cast on the TV. So it's a nice little, like... Um, 
I don't know. Uh, the funny thing that's happened in recent years that TV has tried to do is because originally what they tried to do with like stopping sports streams and like TV streams is um, just like full uh, axe through and say like, oh, we won't allow it. We'll try and stop every source. Same thing with music, right? They started to say like, okay, we're, we're not going to allow it. We're going to try and cut off LimeWire. And then someone came around and they go, why don't we just make it more affordable to make the pain of trying to search it more expensive for your time <laughs> than just like, you know, paying X dollars a month. And that changed the music stream. Like that changed Spotify. Same thing happened with TV where you have your Netflixes, you have your, you know, YouTube TVs, you have your blah, blah, blah. And sports is starting to get there, but I think that's going to be the next one that transitions. Wrestling has done a great job of it. UFC's done a terrible job of it. NHL has done kind of a moitié moitié job of it. Yeah, hey, moitié moitié. I like. I hope right. LimeWire's still going. Is it? I don't know. Do LimeWire.com. See what the fuck happens. I don't know. I think. I think. Uh, yeah, it's. Well, I at least love LimeWire, but you don't add songs to your phone anymore. That's the thing, you, yeah. You there's... like the cloud better. And the LimeWire can't exist in the cloud because it's all supposed to be open source, yada, yada, yada. Open source, Yahoo, Yippies. And you don't want, you know, duck, I mean, just go. the way that you can, you know, you click your artist and then you go to, you know, Bad Bunny, of course. Is that your favorite artist? Of course. Uh, and then you click on something else. You know, it's so easy. On LimeWire, you, you search Bad Bunny, and then you get a, you get Stairway to Heaven, Led Zeppelin featuring The Who, featuring ACDC, featuring Guns N' Roses. And what are you going to do? You're going to click on it. Because imagine those four or five acts coming together, and guess what? Every single time, you're wrong. It's just some other version of Stairway to Heaven recorded live that somebody just named different and now we're fucked extremely rare version I did that never never ever even heard before this is illegal in seven different counties I did that so many Texas. times as a young as a youngin I fell for I fell for that trick all the time did you all the time of course hmm. I'm sorry to hear that um, seem to be ruffling a lot. Seem to be ruffling a lot of papers over well, there. Well, I spilled. Uh, I, you, I, I, I did, yeah, you did, I spilled coffee on a book, so mm. it just sounds terrible yeah. when I try and move through it. Now, this is of course, uh, Cam. You spilled coffee. You've been working on this. Uh, you've been working on this script for a while. Um, I lo I'd love to hear about it. Are there any kind of notes that you can uh, you can tell us about it right now? Or you're staring at it. I'm trying. I'm, tr I'm trying to. I'm trying to capture Chris D'Elia as a character, um, hmm. but he's not answering my calls. Oh, I would also like to. Uh, this was a note that I forgot to include. There's something I learned recently. Uh, the other week on the podcast, we were talking about the uh, Netflix uh, little quick thing, the history of swear words. And how the very first name you see after the show and the credits begin is executive producer Christopher D'Elia. And I thought that was a clever way to kind of cover yourself up. Uh, you know, kind of use your full name instead of just your half name. No, turns out there's a producer at Netflix named <laughs> Christopher D'Elia. Totally different guy. He's got like glasses. He's kind of pudgy. He has an IMDb page where he's produced other Netflix shit. Um, but yeah, I Are you get certain? I, oh, I did the research on this one because um, I was like, there's no way they would put his name first. Like, I can understand maybe like burying it somewhere in the middle there, but putting his name first, that's a stretch. There's two Chris D'Elia's out there. Uh, one, I can presume, is a, a, a lovely family man. You know, he lives in Santa Monica. Probably, you know, goes to his in-laws cottage on the weekends and then the other one. So, you know. Well, I can't seem to find the note that I was looking for, so I'm going to pass blow past that. What a shame. I'm not going to tell you what it was. I don't even I don't know what the heck you were looking for. Just yeah, it's fine. through Nothing. your notes. Hey, you know what I got to do this weekend for the first time? Uh, because we... Uh, you're never going to guess it. I don't know why I threw that out there that way. It's more just a starting of the conversation where I say, I'm going to talk for the next three minutes. Um, I got to uh, be full dad mode and tinker around the garage for most of my Saturday. What a day. That's fun. What a day. Oh, unbelievable. Setting up the shop, you know, sweeping the garage, you know, getting the speakers going, you know, open the doors up, get this, get some sun in there. Got the breeze. Yeah. 
let the breeze in there, I'll clean everything up, you know, polish the tools. Oh, I think I look it better there. Hang some stuff up. Oh, beautiful. Love tinkering on a Saturday in the garage. Is never had to, never never was able to do it before. Is there a, Didn't have a garage. is there a dartboard or mini fridge in there? Are those kind of next steps or Oh, those could be dangerous next steps, yeah. How's that dangerous? <laughs> Because I won't leave. <laughs> oh, okay. That's not dangerous for somebody else. It's dangerous no. that you don't believe you'd have the control to <laughs> they're, then they're leave. Da- they're dangerous, yeah. Like, um, yeah, I, I don't know why. I have a punching bag in there now, so it's like, you know, I just spend all day doing that and then just slanging weight and then working on bicycles and then just listening to ACDC and saying that music has never gotten better since ACDC's first album. Hey, man. <laughs> Oh wow, <laughs> 70, 78 jailbreak! <laughs> wow, <laughs> I thought you would at least go up to Back in Black or something, or uh, your, your, the, the the Razor's Edge. No, no, the music stopped after that. Then you have your um, your oh, what the hell was his name? Sam Smiths of the world. Your Jason Derulo's. Oh, we don't need any of that. Okay. We need to go back to the basics. I don't even know it's on jailbreak, honestly. 78 jailbreak. Could not tell you it could be. <laughs> it, could, it could actually be 76, and I got this all wrong. But Cam, I'm not Do you know one wrong song when it comes to something like this. Do I want a one song? <sighs> no. I'm going to. Either something <laughs> with the word, with a, with a pow- word that has to do with like power. They talk a lot about power, and they have a few songs with the word balls in them written. Uh, written in them. Oh, so, I've got big balls. You've got big balls. I, we've got big balls. I think that's actually the same song. That's just the chorus. <laughs> oh, no, I, I'm, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I have a lot of songs about uh, rocking. Like rock is, uh, yeah. uh, you know, in, in the hunt. It's a big theme back then. It's like, uh, we got, you got to keep a rocking. Yeah, a lot Whatever of that like means. That. A lot of things like that. Cam, okay, you ready yeah. for another little segment here for you? I'm ready. Boom. Let's uh let me give you a top five. Cam <sighs> I had such a relevant top five and it was on my notes, but we'll and you spilled still coffee. You spilled, then you spilled coffee on them. Yeah, I spilled coffee. Why wait, wait, you're writing your notes on paper? Go digital, baby. Go digital. I'm trying to take down the trees of the environment. You know I work in oil, right? I do know you work in oil. <laughs> yeah, that's a good point. You want less trees. Less uh, trees just, means more something. Well, Cam, and that was, I thought, honestly, the most selfish part of your move was the uh, the boxes just filled with reams of paper that you made <laughs> us move. And like, you kind of bought them before you moved. Like, the packing slips were still on them, and they were dated just a few days prior. It it's was fire, fire starter. It was incredibly selfish. It was incredibly selfish of you, Cam. We're moving over. Uh, we are moving over to this week's top five, though, because I have for you here um, the, t- <laughs> the top five different types of vapors. Here's a top five. Here are five tips about five things. Five, five, things, five, things, five, things, five, things, five, things, five, five ways. Five, 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 five. No, it's just a top five. What? Yeah. All right. You know what? You know what? 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 It, what it is, Kim? You know, uh, kind of. We. I, we. When I returned to the motherland uh, to help you move uh, the other day, you know, we have friends who vape. I don't have, I don't know anyone who vapes oh, anymore. I and hear you we now. sort of talk about friends and they were vaping and I was like, oh yeah, I forgot uh, kind of about that, you know? I do know a couple dart smokers, but, uh, you know, I don't really, I don't hang out with uh, vapors so much. So it kind of got me thinking. So here's uh, the five different types of vapors and came. Let me know which one you were at one point or sort of by the end of it or whatever. So uh, coming in number five, we have the quitter. You know, these are the ones who we see. These are the ones who we always see around New Year's. You know, these uh, they're committed to kicking the tobacco habit, but they want something a little sexier than the patch or gum. No one wants to put on the patch. You know, it doesn't. There's nothing cool. I don't think you want to put it on, but you just you know you put it on somewhere known. You don't put it on like your forearm. Be like, hey, I'm rocking a patch. But this is this is the Gen Two. You know, this is the Gen Two. You know, this is also where you see um, the the people d- uh, vaping the disposable type pod things, the jewels, and they're just pounding through these puffs. You know, they're just sucking them, sucking back. them back. These are the ones who are probably ex. And they're, 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 can I add on this? They're the people who are just the biggest advocates. They're like, I used to smoke seven packs a day, and this thing's only equivalent to 
you know, whatever equivalent that is. And they're like, I'm, it's basically like I'm drinking green smoothies. I'm basically just eating kale, Cam. I think that might, I think that type of person may fit into another one of these categories a little oh, further okay. down. Um, but yeah, you're exactly right. Let me know anything that comes up, Cam. Coming to number four, we have uh, the dipper. Oh, you're just kind of dipping your toe into the waters of what that might be. You know, maybe you keep uh, a quick little uh, convenience store vape in your bag for when uh, the mood strikes at a party. Maybe you leave it in the cup holder of your car so a little you can have a little hit when you're driving. You're not a regular vapor, but you do enjoy the quick flavor burst of lemon strawberry or the smooth nicotine rush from time to time. Not always, though. You might be doing this in secret, too. Maybe, uh, you know, you sneak off to the bathroom for a quick puff puff so your parents don't catch wind. You know, maybe you don't want Beautiful. your girlfriend knowing that you like a that you like a little caramel sugar. Yeah, the the VG and the uh, I don't really the one. Yeah, I that's that, that that's the housewife as well, who is, is keeping it in the purse. And when she goes out mm. to the grocery store, sitting in the car to. <laughs> just like that just like that it's the new uh sad mom smoking in her car it is the new one is sad mom smoking her vape in the car cam coming in <laughs> at number three we have the e aficionado that's right this oh, is where she- beautiful this is the champion <laughs> this is where shit starts to get serious you walk through this a- is the double coil rapper <laughs> well, uh, you, you, <laughs> you walk through a cloud of smoke and you can name the brand the region and even the vintage of the juice that was just popped. <laughs> oh, they go deeper than that they're this like is oh it's an organic this cotton is blend that you have in there. level you're probably vaping a big tank with a nice ceramic coil for clean flavor and that sweet sweet strong strawberry rasp there's seven batteries in the thing that you're holding you have to hold it with two hands and it's just <laughs> yeah this cotton's originally uh, arrived from nicaragua but um i typically bleach it myself and i find that adds the most purity to it <laughs> yeah yeah uh you know just like they're drinking some fine wine okay i'm coming at number two we have the stylist I see you, Mr. Stylist. I see you over there smoking your nice Kanger Tech Aspire smock rig. I can see it. You like a little stylish vape in your hand and a big cloud left to those in your wake. I wouldn't even be surprised if you knew a trick or two. Maybe the uh, some smoke rings. Maybe the uh, uh, the arrow through the smoke the rings. Smooth, maybe you can do the breathe it on the table and then whiff it up into the tornado. Oh, beautiful. You know, for someone who spends a big part of their day looking for a place to charge, you're still looking pretty cool while you do it. I love it. Yeah, that's the guy you're really looking forward to party. And coming in at number one, we have who we can only describe as the pro vapor. You're a professional at this point. Oh, he's elite? Like he's sponsored? You can tell the power output of a battery just by smelling it. You keep a pair of scissors in your pocket and cotton in your just, wallet. You're ready to case. go for that perfect double coil at any times. You know the temperature, the homage. Hell, you even know how many puffs you have left before your battery dies. These are the professional. These, these are pros that we can't even describe. No, these are the guys who go to competitions and... Um I, they're they're probably like no nick kind of guys because it's not even about the addiction anymore. It's about the lifestyle. It's just about looking cool. You can look so cool mm. when you vape. There you have it. There's your top five uh, types of vapors. There. Beautiful champ. Yeah. That was great. That was great. Um, wow. I didn't. I I didn't think I could classify that many. But now that you break it down that way, it does make sense. Um, for next week, I think we're going to try and have, uh, and we'll try and figure this out. It's going to be the top five common episode themes, overplayed episode themes. And we're going to see if one of the Knight Rider ones falls in this category. Wait, is this, this is, this is what you're doing? Next, next, that's the one that was on the paper. Oh, that's okay. Go, you gotta go digital, baby. Cam. Well, I think we talked, we've talked about before. Definitely. I think we had a corrections about like the nine different stories you can yeah, tell. Yeah, but this one, this one's not so much that. It's more like 
um, the thing that you always see in a show that happens and you're like, yeah, yeah, I've seen this one before. It's kind of like the important package goes missing and the whole episode is trying to find it. Okay, right? yeah. And that story that story arc that's been played a million times in a million different ways. Okay, and if that's the case, I'm going to need you to take some, dil- some diligent notes to kind of ensure that, you know, we don't have any uh, crossovers. What do you mean? You know, you need to be taking notes of what type of story is being told so then you can go, ha-ha, season one, episode six. You did the same story back then. Oh, I see what you mean. No, I don't think it often happens in the same show. It'll happen across platforms. Okay. <laughs> oh, hello. Oh, my assistant's dropping off a nice... Uh, promotional placement Diet Cola here. Diet Coke. Thank you very much. Uh, it has Owen on it. I'm not Owen. Who's Owen? It says it on the Diet Coke wrapper. I've seen that before. There's way more O. I think Coca Cola thinks there's more Owens than there actually are. Or there's more people named. Or Owens aren't drinking enough Diet Coke and they should be drinking more. I don't know. Yeah, trying to appeal to a broader like, I don't audience. know a single Owen. We don't need any more Steve's. Yeah. I've known one Owen who was, you know, Don't know peer. one. Owen Nolan. That's it. Yeah, but he, I don't think you, I don't think that counts as knowing him. Yeah, I know I don't know him at all. You know, like, I don't um, know a Wayne, but I know a Wayne. I just don't Gretzky. know yeah. a Wayne. <clears throat> Speaking of names, um, turns out I have another middle name that I found out about this week. Wait, what? How did you not kick off the show with this information <laughs> i don't know how okay how, uh, uh, explain i didn't know i thought my name was cameron jack leclaire that's what we shannon thought was it going was. through my baby books and she was like she comes up to me one night she goes can i ask you something kind of weird wait what where are she, the she, baby books why, why, why they're just upstairs they're up, upstairs you have why do you <laughs> have know. your baby I, books in your home I don't know, because I'd like to keep uh, fond memories of my childhood and stuff like that, and they're mine. Okay, I guess they Um, are They Anyway, she was like, do you, she's like, can I say something weird? She goes, do you have another name? And I go, no. And she goes. Well, other than Big Sexy. Are you, yeah, other than Big Sexy, Big Hog. uh, Other than 5 foot 11 stud. Five foot eleven, five eleven stud, obese stud, named after a horse, um, <laughs> for more than <laughs> yeah. one reason. You're five eleven, you're obese, and you're named after a horse. Cam, you're kind of o for three in uh, in, in the current scheme. Anyway, um, it turns. She asked, so she asked me like, you, you don't have like, you're not like hiding a name from me or anything like that, and I'm like. No. <laughs> wait, like, wait, as if you have uh, a second life. I, I don't know. <laughs> I, as if, as if I'm going by this other name, right? <laughs> Right, and I'm like, I don't know what you're talking about. And she's like, Yeah, your full name is Cameron Jack Edmund Leclaire. Edmund. Edmund. Who yeah. the fuck is Edmund? Apparently, my great great grandfather's named Edmund. So I may have been filling out legal documents wrong since day one. What? Like, what? No, I've you never... literally have. If you've just found out <laughs> about this name now. They and they are. Oh, yeah. You're one of those people too. I got the double. I feel like I don't like people like people with. T- oh fuck! I should have never brought this. <laughs> should have never brought it. I up. don't like them either. I don't like myself. So wow. So C J E L are your kind of uh, your initials there, or is Edmund yeah. before Jack? No, apparently it's after, and I might just forget that it ever happened. And your you know? and your father never explained this to you because. Fuck if I know. The, I gotta bring this up with them. Thought the truth would hurt. <laughs> yeah, like why didn't anyone ever tell me that I have another name? Yeah, you Kinda think confusing. that would have come to, came up at one point? Yeah, someone might have been like, I'd have been like, my name is Cameron Jack. Well, clear, they were like Cameron Edmund, right? Or, or just maybe, like a casually like. So then, your grandfather Edmund, who you were named after? Well, no, would, not my grandfather. My great grandfather. Great grandfather. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But he doesn't come up in conversation often because he's been dead for how long? How long is it? Uh, how long was it? So long that I didn't know I had his name. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ! Well, Cam, that's something. That is something. Um, so we're officially changing the title of the podcast to Edmund's Podcast. Edmund's Podcast! I don't even like the name. I know one Edmund ever. M- and he was, E-D-M-O-N-D? Yeah. Um, I don't even know how it's spelled, honestly. Jesus Christ. I, 
Um, yeah, so kind of interesting uh, way to st- start the week. I don't know. And start the rest of my life, I guess. I mean, you could now, you have now have another name to like go by. This is a big deal. This uh, can is a big you, deal. you can start calling me Ed, I guess. We can call you Eddie. I don't mind that. I don't mind that. Eddie. Yeah, that's not bad. Eddie, that's not a bad name. That's not a bad name. Or, you know, you could have yeah. this name to then have people named after. You know, or like. Here's what we go with somebody names their son Ed, Eddie. Because uh, it was it was Cam Leclerc's forgotten middle name. You know who knows? It's a whole new list of possibilities. Or I meet someone new. They go, "Hey, what's your name?" I go, "Cameron." They go, "Do you prefer Cam or Cameron?" I go, "Eddie." I prefer Eddie. Hey, my name's <laughs> Cameron, but people call me Eddie. You're like, why do they call you Eddie? <laughs> oh, because it's my middle name. Oh, so you just why didn't you just introduce yourself by your middle name? Oh, because my name because my name's Cameron. That's, my name's Cameron Jack Edmund Leclerc. So it's not like it's kind of it's not actually the middle. It's kind of like there's no middle because it's four. So it's like you know it's on not it's, it's on the far end of it, not the middle. We would need five to be in the middle or three. So it's um it's funny. It, 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 it you know it's it's a crazy story to bring up. Uh, I too I like you. So my mom digitized all of the family videos mm-hmm. that uh, were taken from you know like newborn up until like nine or like eight or something like that, right? And I was watching, flicking through of them. There's like five DVDs worth of just, you know, you're doing shit as a baby, and you're giggling, and then you're swimming, all kinds of crap like that. And it wasn't right. until I started watching that, my parents always told me that as a baby, like as when I was really young, everybody called me Storm. And my parents would always say that. And then I was kind of like, oh, okay, yeah, they called me Storm probably in like a cute, endearing way. But I'm watching these videos, and everybody calls me Storm in them. And I have no clue where that stopped. It's just sort of like, you know, I'm there, you know, at like a family gathering, and they're all like, hey, Storm, are you going? And, you know, I, I, can't, I, I, can't, I can like just only walk or something, right? And, and you do like a little lightning bolt. You're like, bah. You know? Yeah, and then I quick dab <laughs> on them. But yeah, it'll be like, you know, like I'm, I'm learning to walk. My dad's like, come on, Storm, come here, Storm. Or we're at like a, a friend's or like family's cottage, and then someone else has the video camera, and they're like, here's Storm Osborne on the beach, and like shit like that. Like everyone was calling me Storm, and I don't know where it stopped. <laughs> you do a little backflip and a punch in the air. <laughs> <laughs> Quick backflip. Yeah, every single time somebody said it, I did do a little bit of pizzazz. Maybe like I kind of I had glitter stuck in my pockets and then I would just throw it up in the air and do a quick spin. Uh, a spinning wheel kick where you land on one knee and <laughs> punch into the ground. Storm. Because I have a friend who um, moved from Alberta to, to uh, London when I, went, when I lived in London and he like now lives in Montreal. But he made a name change when he went from Alberta to Ontario he switched from going by his first name to going by his second name you know kind of like you know you make that switch in life I guess at one point you're like nope that's not what I'm gonna be called you know I'm just gonna call me by my middle name instead and it's uh I want to go by Danger Dave (laughs) well I think you know all right my name's Cameron but people call me Danger Dave yeah well you know if you wanted to make that decision you know you're, you're Eddie now we have I'm to. Eddie. We have to just start calling you Eddie, and then it's funny. Call me too. Ed or Eddie or Cam or Cameron or Jack, but don't call me late for dinner. And then I'll run into friends of theirs from before they changed their name, and they'll say like, right. "How long? How long uh, have you known Philip for?" And you're like, and you're like, are, who you the dead? are you dead? Naming who the fu- me right who now? Who the fuck's Philip? Yeah. <laughs> like, oh, <laughs> I didn't realize. You know, or you kind of like put the two clues together. You're like, oh, shit, I didn't realize. You ever have that when you go to someone's house, which you like exclusively know them as a nickname? And then like, not, not exclusively, but like you basically forgot that that was their first name. For example, Alex Park. We mostly refer to him as Park. And then we're in his family home and we're like, you're all parks. <laughs> what do we do here? <laughs> I say park. Yeah. Everybody will. Uh, everybody will respond. This is not good. Everybody looks and salivates like dogs. <laughs> this is not good. <laughs> what do we do here? How do I differentiate? I thought you were going to say that Alex wasn't even his his first name. <laughs> it goes even deeper. <laughs> well, no, um, I don't think I have any friends who you call a nickname to. I don't think so. I don't think I have any friends who. Oh yeah, I guess Just I do M. at work. Like he goes by his last name. What is it? Brahma. 
but he introduces himself with his first name. So it is kind of funny sometimes because sometimes it works. When somebody, you see it and you just don't expect it, you're like, oh, I forgot that is yeah, your or, name. Yeah, or they'll bring up, you know, they'll bring up his first name and then you're like, wait, who the fuck are you talking about? And, oh, yeah. shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, now I remember. Yeah, Rama. It yeah, takes yeah. you a second to remember that, uh, yeah, they don't actually go by their first name. Oh. Yeah, it's like when people call me Ed all the well, time. Well, I'm going to. This is, is Edmund's podcast. Yeah. This is C E in a pod. Uh, <laughs> uh, we would have gone with a totally different uh, name if uh, if your name was Edmund or Eddie or something like that. And even if it's Eddie. even if you went Ed. by Eddie when we met, it would have been like it wouldn't have been fun because now I just like we share a name, but it's not a name that you go by. Yeah, it's like two people exactly, having the same middle yeah. name of like Robert or like probably yeah. two girls who are who best cares? friends, but their middle names are Anne. Like Christine, yeah, yeah, it's it, it wouldn't be as fun, you know, but uh, that's great. I'm glad to hear that this is now Edmund's podcast. My name is Cameron Osborne, and I'm just here, uh, for shit, as a uh, tech tech re- support. I'm yeah. just here as a uh, yeah, something a for you to boy. bounce feeds off of. Thank god, now, now we're gonna have to look for Edmund on your on our fucking diet cokes. Uh, you know what I found was funny, here on out. I was telling Shannon about this. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll get to the final game after this, but something funny that I find that guys do with each other, but um, you just ever, hardly ever see women do with each other, is men will completely intentionally say something very harmful to that person with no intention of harming them. for Just for a laugh, because they both know it's like skin off their back. Like... I'll message my friend and be like, hey, you big bitch, are you ready to ride on Wednesday? Classic, For no re- classic like, message that we've all, if you're a friend of Camel Claire, you've received yeah. a message from him that you says, big, hey, you bi- big dumb hey, idiot. hey, big bitch, ready to ride on Wednesday. Yeah, you big, hey, big dumb idiot. Like something like that. But um doesn't fly so well if uh, you're of the double X chromosome, I find. They just don't really speak to each other in harmful ways. Oh yeah, I think women. I, I think it's probably because they're more naturally caring and less brash than yeah, us. And not trying to just impose on each other and not be like, I have the biggest stick and I'm putting it on the table. Not belching on Mike, Eddie. you know, at all these sorts. Of, yeah, Eddie's the kind of guy who's like, Hey, I'm Eddie. I'm go- if I got a I'm, I'm gonna Eddie. burp. I'm gonna burp on the microphone. Hey, I'm Eddie. Go gonna fuck fucking put my dick on the table and hang out in my hey, garage. Hey, Eddie, this is hey, this is I'm Eddie and this is my dick. I'm Eddie. This is my <laughs> fucking right on the table. Look how big it is. Look hey, at it. This, you Look want, at it. Eye contact. You my eyes are up here. My dick's down here. You sausage. My name's Eddie. <laughs> my name's Eddie. It's, it's a whole new, you know, Cam, this could be a whole new beginning for you, Cam. But you were right. You said that we have Ugh. to get on to our last game. And I think it is about time that we do get on to that last game. So let's play a little round of Headliner Asinine. Hey. 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 Headline. Headline. Hey. Hey. Headline or asinine? Uh, okay. Of course, because the news doesn't stop. The news that never we stops. We call it the 24-hour news cycle. But um, but it never stops because it's 24 hours. Cam, I'm going to let you kick this one off this week. All right. Man caught inserting his penis into car exhaust fined $200 for rape. Ah, this is an appropriate can. This is an inappropriate headline for you to have created or not. Um, I think that's an episode of the show Paradise PD on Netflix. The character falls in love with a kit esque smart car, and the only way for him to fall, you know, or to physically express his love towards the car is to insert himself into the, you know, the closest thing that would seem like a hole. You know, because you don't want to just like you know, come on the seats, because then you just kind of have come on your seats. You can't really get as intimate with a with, with a with a car without doing it yourself. I don't know if you can charge for it. I feel like that would be you're charged for like indecent exposure at that point, unless it's your car and you're on your property. In which case, go fuck away. Uh, this is asinine. This is a headline out of Newton, and it doesn't actually define where Newton is. Uh, it's a 2018 article, so it's a little bit confusing. Oh, it's Africa, Newton, Africa, um, the common town, the very large one. Uh, of course, and you appara- have. <laughs> yeah, yeah, go on. So apparently, the court document stated that he unlawfully, intentionally, and publicly exposed a sex organ or exposed a sex organ in the presence of another person who is not the spouse of the offender and who had not consented to thereto. 
consented thereto with the intent to arouse or gratify the sexual desires of oneself or another. So it was considered um, a misdemeanor rape. You don't hear that one too often, folks. Don't hear that uh, one from this often. 20, <laughs> from this 24-year-old man who was four times the legal limit of alcohol. Four, what's four? What's what's the legal limit? Like 0.08? I, I mean, I don't just actually think about know. It. That's yeah, a just lot. don't drink a drive. Um, yeah. yeah, that's that's crazy. I'm it's yeah, I mean, but I, I you know, I'm not a I, I, I'm not a political person, but I believe you should be able to do that with your I'm car. No politi- if, I'm if no, you're I'm on no your own property pundit. and the car consents, it is. Uh, yeah, Eddie is the kind of guy who's gonna who's gonna fuck his Mustang. <laughs> Fucking Eddie loves his Mustang. Eddie loves fucking his Mustang. Okay, Cam, here. Oh, fuck your Mustang. I got one here for you. Uh, headliner asked nine, Mexican woman stabs husband after finding sexy photos of the two of them. Well, I always do think that sexual desire does lead to uh, appeal to be a little bit crazy. Um... Does it lead to stabbing someone after finding some photos? I mean, I feel like this is a headline out of my the place where I last lived out of, so I'm going to go ahead and call a headline. People stab each other all the time for finding things. Where did you live prior to prior to this? <laughs> the, the hood, fam. Jesus Christ, Cam. Well, this is a headline. However, I think that you misheard me, which would have created a little as, bit of... As usual. Which, which would have created a little bit of craziness uh, here within the story itself. So this is a story coming out of Cajeme, Mexico, where a woman has been arrested for allegedly stubbing her husband multiple times in the arms and legs after finding sexy photos of him and another woman on his cell phone. However, it wasn't until after stabbing him, yeah, in the arms and legs, like I said before, she looked at the photos and get again and realized, oh shit, wait, that's me. See, I was thinking more so that it was like he was holding them um, hostage, if you kind of. Not hostage, but like, yeah, basically black hostage. Male. Like, I'm not deleting. The, yeah, blackmail. But it is true. So the husband did have sexy photos uh, of himself and a woman on his phone. However, it was actually his wife. And the photos were from years ago. The wife was obviously confused and showing remorse. She claims that she didn't recognize the photos because she was much younger, thinner, and had makeup on. Uh, oh God! The the man's he's uh, expected to recover from his injuries. The wife's been arrested and is currently in jail, awaiting whatever happens next. Uh, I think the long story short is just you know just d- don't have those don't have any photos like that on your phone in the first place. That way nothing can yeah. be misconstrued, misunderstood. Uh, Put but him I in love the cloud. I love admitting <laughs> having to admit. That you were hotter back then than you are now, or like having to admit I that didn't you're even ugly. recognize myself. Yeah. Like having to admit that you're uh, you've gained weight and uh, have let yourself go. I do like that. All right, headline or yes and nine. Call of Duty lands escaped convict back in prison. Call of Duty lands escaped convict back in prison. Uh, yeah, well, you can, can you they get arrested? Like, swatting, if they find out if you swatted somebody, that's going to get you arrested. But escaped convict, how many people escape from jail? They think the first thing you're going to do is just hop on Call of Duty. <laughs> as soon as you get back, you're like, oh, great. I've been able to play Warzone in the last uh, three to five years. <laughs> in the last three to five years, I'm going to pick it up. This story feels a little weird. Uh, yeah, I don't know how Call of Duty can get you back into jail, but it's gonna ha- it's gonna be something weird and a total cam story. Uh, so I'm gonna say that's a headline. That is a headline, and basically we had an escaped convict. Yeah, that who was clear. Was hiding hiding down in lockdown, so he wasn't leaving the house at all. So very good time to escape prison because you don't you have you get to wear a mask first of all. Mm-hmm. Um. You're fine to hide your identity, and you don't really have to leave the house for almost any reason because no one does. And no one's going to notice you because no one's outside. Anyway, he's getting really bored in lockdown and goes out to buy the new Call of Duty. Of course, Call of Duty Cold War, now available on the PS5. Cold War. Uh, big scuffle ensues because the police officer, or I think like someone off-duty finds him, and big scuffle moves. Someone gets kicked in the nuts, and then he gets handcuffed. And as the headline says... Sometimes going out for cod 
puts you back in bars. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't like the way that headline was phrased because, uh, yeah, that was just me. Hey, that's the point of it. That's the point of that's it. That's just the point of it. That's the point of it. Okay, I'm ready for your next one. Ready. <clears throat> Headliner asks nine. Uh, doctor finds boy's missing hamster wedged into seven hundred pound mom's back fat. I'm thinking the way this happened is hamster got out of the cage. She sits down. I'm surprised they didn't find the whole body. Um, next thing you know, she doesn't notice the hamster probably dies. They're probably hoarders. It's not, this isn't like a happy story. It's like, Oh, look at this uh, old Eddie strikes again. <laughs> um, um, yeah, just overall sad story of people being way too overbeat or overweight and um, sitting on things they shouldn't. Just getting sucked up there, and then months later finding that your life is so sad that you killed your own son's hamster. Headline. That one's asinine, Cam. I made it up. Why did you do this to me? Because uh, that's part of the game. You made up the I You guess. invented the game. Fuck. I guess. All right, headliner last time. A toilet seat with built-in scales now exists so you can weigh your load. Now, this is... Everyone's done this at one point or another, and if you haven't, or you say you haven't, you're lying. You think you got a big poop coming. Hell, you think you got a big pee coming. Weigh yourself. Do your business. Weigh you yourself again. Check. Sometimes you're like, wow, that was a, that was a two-pounder! Can be sometimes, of course, you know. Yeah, if you got to pee once in the middle of the night, you know, that can be draining how many fluid ounces out of you. You never know. So I think just having that technology readily available would save a lot of time those, like, two times a year that you might do it. I have a bathroom scale. You know, I have that option. But not everybody has the bathroom scale. At the right price, the right creep could really like this. Um, I wonder, I hope this is a Kickstarter. If it is, you know, I'll toss him a buck. Maybe get a free pin out of it. Uh, I'm going to say that's a headline. This is a headline out of Japan where the actual Sounds scale good. itself kind of sits right beside it. Interestingly enough, it does not say like at the end of it how much the difference is. It just says your starting weight and ending weight. So a little disappointing there. Uh, made by name and Nate. A man named Haikun Deng and originally made it not for this specific purpose, but instead for women who want to consistently check their weight and will feel more skinny every time they finish pooping. Um, it's created out of curiosity rather than necessity, so it's not exactly for sale. <laughs> I think it's kind of like a pilot project, but uh, it, it, the technology is out there, folks. Wow. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, I mean, you don't need to see how much. You don't need a number telling you how much your business was. You just kind of take both numbers, subtract, and then uh, you got it. Wouldn't it be nice to say like if the number just popped up and at the end it's like four pounds? You're like, holy smokes. Well, I think what we need here, Cam, a way that we can improve this. So instead of it going into a toilet, it goes into like a plastic beaker. That's sort of being suspended somewhere below the rim of the toilet, and then that plastic beaker is then what is weighed. Why would you do that? Why don't you subtract the two? Cam, that's exactly what I just said. I'm trying to think of a better no. way that you can get the number where it's like, this is your poop amount. Yeah, but that way you have to find a way to get rid of the poop. Mine, you're just you're just using math. No, mine, you're just using... Jesus Christ, Cam. Jesus Christ, you're all over the place. It's like past your bedtime. You're all over It's past you're your bedtime. You're place. all over the place, Cam. You're out of line. <laughs> no, hey, easy there, Eddie. Don't, turn, don't put your hey. hat on backwards there, Eddie. Arr, gonna go fuck my Mustang, Eddie. Put your clothes back on. No one wants to UFC you, Eddie. <coughs> Jesus Christ, Cam. Are you ready for your last headline here? Yeah. Headliner asks nine. Hackers are holding your genitals hostage in electronic chastity belts. I wonder how if those are real things. I imagine they are, but who would trust like a locking system that's controlled by like a cloud software? Be right? Bezos, I, I, who knows? Bezos is you know if he was he gonna use his own he's gonna use his own uh, equipment. 
I'd much rather trust a uh, lock and key system, but hey, sometimes those fail as well. For example, we tried to walk into the house yesterday, or we tried to come into the house yesterday and our digital code to get in, it was too frozen, so it wasn't unclicking. Thank God I was home to open the door. Um, but that's why you just can't Thank trust God. technology. Thank sometimes, God. sometimes that old lock and key technology is really what you need. Um, but has someone come out with a digital chastity belt? Yes. Is it controlled by the cloud? That's asinine, Cam. Cam, this is another headline here for you. This is a story coming out of the UK from a product called the Cellmate, an electronic chastity belt. Uh, for men, which surrounds your penis <clears throat> and locks itself around it. The chassis belt has wireless connection with the ability to be controlled on an app. So um, that uh, various controls, um, locking and unlocking, uh, amount of vibration, uh, but, you know, potentially stopping the wearer from getting an erection. Remember, this is super dominate your subs at Subway kind of uh kind of nonsense right the teasing that somebody could unlock it with a button but they won't um gotcha. so this happened when uh <clears throat> when a uh somebody got this from their partner so their partner could uh control their erections control your boners um and well like you can believe the app is not perfect apparently it is very easier for hackers to access your information your account information control it like you would from the app and even lock you out this is when a man who wasn't named by the way but he received an email saying uh you know we're hackers we've taken over your device and you're not going to be able to get back into it so of course these guys are frantically trying to get back into their account nothing works they tried everything uh the product has no fail safe manual override it can only be unlocked digitally so the ransomers, they do the best move. They ask for $1,000 in Bitcoin. This guy's freaking out. He's got a piece of technology over his junk. He's freaking out so much, he does exactly what he's asked. He transfers over the cryptocurrency. But of course, that's not how you play a ransom game. Nope. I'll give you 500 now, 500 when it comes off. He's too scared to say that. He gives them all the 1,000. They respond back by saying, okay, we want 1,000 more. The hacker Oof. sent his final message to the victim saying, your cock is mine now. The user was able to get the device off after a trip to the hospital where there was a- Yeah, that would have been move number where one. Where there was apparently, opinion. quote, a good amount of blood, end quote, says the report. Uh, <laughs> Going back to that indefinite measure. Uh, what size of cock do you want? A good blood. amount but of it. Any amount of blood around a topical conversation, my penis, isn't an amount of blood that, uh, let alone a good amount of blood. Uh, but just so, you know, if people out there, we're not kink shaming out there, because there have been about 40,000 of these devices bought, sent out already um, all over the world. The company responded by saying they are taking action to improve their security. Well, that's terrifying. I would get rid of that de device ASAP. Yeah, I can't imagine you're going back to the uh, digital chastity belt. They do also, I did check it out, they also do make ones for women also. Um, same thing. <laughs> you control it wirelessly. And it's a little chastity belt. So there you go, folks. Um, for all you, uh, all you, all you people out there. All you freaks in the sheets. Yeah, yeah I guess freaks in the sheets is an endearing term. Uh, I was just going to say fucking weirdos. But yeah, all you freaks in the sheets, get your digital chassis belts now. And that is... Uh, update that app. Update that app. That is all the time I believe that we have for this week's podcast episode. Thank you for listening, folks. You can rate, review, like, and subscribe. The podcast is everywhere. You know, coming up on episode 60, we're on the other side of that hundo. You know, we're getting to the hundo now. The hard this, part. We're on the, the other side of done. the hill, as they say. The hard part's done, and now it's the. Uh, it's all downhill from here. Cruising through these next forty episodes. Um, if you have any suggestions for what we should title the five-minute segment, we have a few ideas popping in there. There is a night in five minutes. There is a night's recap. There is um, the late night shift. Ooh, I like right. That. If you have any ideas, don't please, well, please let us know. What you can let us please know. Please let us know. What two Please let us know what to, I'm not responding to any crowd feedback. Okay, great. 
Well, thanks for tuning in, folks. Uh, never forget, slugs have four noses, and you measly humans only have one. We'll tune in next week. I'm Eddie, signing off. <laughs> Take care, folks. <laughs> Continuing tonight on two C's in a pod. 96.7 on your two C's in a pod, 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 two C's just like two C's in a pod, two C's just like two C's in a pod, two C's just like two C's in a pod, two C's in a pod at gmail.com.